Hey everyone, it's Chrissy from Everyday Sivalgi and today we are reviewing the Alone Fire X560. So Alone Fire is another clone of our already cloned cloned clone companies. So this is turning into Star Wars Attack of the Clones. So you got Ultra Fire, Unique Fire. Ultra Fire used to make some pretty damn good lights. And this light kind of looks a little bit reminiscent of the um, SK-68 that if you were around back in the days of the uh, Lone Fire, sorry, the Ultra Fire days, you would know what the uh, SK-68 is. And I do actually have a few of the, U of the Unique Fire lights. I've got quite a few of their throwers now, so yes. So the Alone Fire X560 is a uh, single 18650 tactical looking light. It does look the part, right? Looks very cool. If you compare this to a um, S2 Plus, the S2 Plus is pretty bland. This is kind of looks like a jet beam kind of design light. Only not a jet beam price. This is only 10 US dollars from AliExpress. Click on the link below to purchase. I don't actually usually leave links but if someone asks me I'll post it up actually I probably should leave links so the Alone Fire X560 single 18650 uh, flashlight with a uh, towel cap that lights and that's what sold it for me I was like what towel cap lights I already got 20 lights like that but this one looks cool and then I was like bye but little did I know it comes with a few caveats so, it's a cool looking light, cheap, what about output? Well, the LED on the listing is supposed to be a Cree XPL V6. So me and you and probably everyone else on the internet know what a Cree XPL looks like. This does not look like a Cree XPL. Way too big, dome is not shaped the same. It looks kind of like a mix between an XML2 and an SSD40, but it is neither of those. So it just done the reverse Uno on us. This is actually a um, fake LED that's made to look like the Cree XML2 that has been tested on BLF. I'll leave that link in the prescription below. Um, apparently it can do up to uh, 2,200 lumens, 2,300 lumens. So it still does perform pretty well. Um, this light does not do that. Maximum this light gets is about 600 lumens. So it's nowhere near near that amount. It's not running our, our direct drive setup, and even if it was, it would burn out straight away because it's only on the aluminium alloy board. So yes. So as I was saying, with this LED, you get about six hundred lumens, and you get seven thousand four hundred fifty-two CD max. So besides the fake Cree XPL V6 or fake XML2, or nowadays fake SSD40, who is who is even using XML2s any, anymore? Um, someone probably is like, but I am. Um, well, they got the XML3 now. You can upgrade if you want. Uh, so besides that, it's kind of like, it's quite a quirky kind of light. It is built really well. I do really like the build quality and it does look really cool. But one of the problems that I'll have with it is that it's, yeah, sure, it's got a towel cap light, but the light only turns on when you turn the light on. Now that's not really much use to it now, is it? The other problem is, it's only got three modes, and one of them is a blinky. Now, if you've been like a mode snob like me for a while, I don't really use Audrell too much. I still prefer my clicky switches, but even something like my modded S2 Plus has a BLF A6 driver with seven modes in there. So I am used to more modes and no blinkies. That is a downside. The positive side is you can mod this pretty easy, but it actually has the driver in the tail cap. So when we take it apart, I'll show you guys how the light is built. It's a very unique light. It should be called a unique fire. Dun -dun -dun. Uh, size wise, it is 121 mils long, so uh, um, 26.5 mil head, so. <laughs> And uh, 25.5mm tail. It's actually about the same as an S2 actually when you sit it down. Um, it takes a standard 17mm driver, although it does sit in the towel cap. You can easily mod the towel cap and fit a standard one in if you wanted to. 16mm uh, LED, sorry, 17mm driver. The reflector is actually slightly bigger than a uh, S2 Plus. 
at 21 mils, that's the outer di di diameter, but you can also see that the inner diameter, phew, you're not going to see it like that, are you? You can see that the inner diameter is also slightly bigger and deeper. Um, it also takes a 20 mil lens, which is probably a little bit too small for this light because it does kind of like wiggle around a bit. So yeah. So taking apart this light, driver is in the back, junk is in the front, that's the way we like it, uh-huh, uh-huh, I don't know. Um, it's a well-built light if you take it a party. So we undo the tail cap. The knurling feels really good. I quite like the knurling. I haven't really spoken much about the light itself, have I? So it's made out of aluminium alloy, which I guess you guys can already know that. Um, and it is hard anodized. They don't say what kind of hard anodizing that it is, but I sell knives now on the internet. So let's have a look if it scratches. A DJ. It's actually, it's pretty good. Didn't scratch. And I've been getting a pretty damn good edge on my knives lately when I've been shopping them. Look at that edge. It's quite a nice edge. Now it's going to be dull. So um, as I was saying, um, the threads are not an an anodized, so you can't really... You can lock it out because it's a pretty short towel cap. But yeah, it's not really going to lock out. Um, under the front, it does have a floating pill. But my argument for you to still buy this light is... The threads are good, the knurling's good, the anodizing is good, and for a long time now we've had kind of like P60 style lights, and people never didn't really mind the fact that it was a floating pill, and the pill itself is actually like pretty good quality. Um, I thought that this had a spring, but I'm not sure, so right now my one does not have a spring in there, so you got to tighten this down. Or else it's going to be loose. Same as I guess as the P60 style light. But the P60s use the spring tension to hold the pill down. Alright, I'll take it apart. Okay, taking it apart. So it kind of looks like the old days, as I was saying before, of the uh, SK68s. It reminds me a little bit of them. Um, pretty easy to take apart. So you could change the pills in here very easy. Uh, if you wanted to, like, have, like, a green pill, or a red pill, or, like, uh, not pills, LED, sorry, if you wanted, like, a green, green pinger, a red pinger, or a white pinger. Um, it's got the crenulated bezel for extra tacticalness, so you can just jab someone in the eye or something, I don't know what that does. So, yeah, so, um, that's the LED there. You can see it's a, uh, Cree XML2 size, if we have a look... Focus. You can see it does look very similar. All right now, don't do this at home because you're not supposed to do this to LEDs. But if you push down on the um, dome, it's a very firm dome. Most of the XMLs and the SST40s they do not feel like that. The dome, and plus you can see the dome is not as clear as what you usually find on something like an XML2 or an SST40. Uh, because the driver is in the back, which I did say before, I think, uh, watch the fingers. This is only a partition board up here. Look at that. Cheeky, cheeky bastards. So I do not know what made them think about doing that with this light, because that is a lot of effort. There is no other light off the shelf that I can think of for, well, at least this price range. I don't have that many exotic lights but even my exotic lights they do not have a driver that sits in the tail cap quite amazing very long spring um yeah so it's a tail cap driver and it's not even like a normal tail cap it's using an e-switch that is not a mechanical switch that's an e-switch so you can see the um, mcu is there there's just a few other com com components of the LEDs, some resistors that looks like a ca capacitor, some sort of SOT, or that could be a tiny MOS MOSFET, a, th a three leg, well, two, two leg actually, or earth, and yeah. Um, and some room for some more re resistors. Not a lot on there, it is only three modes, so yeah. Um, but pretty much, you know, it's a standard sized kind of. Uh, tail, tail cap, so you can take this out and then put in 
your own tail cap, and it does take a um, 17 mil driver, so you can fit a driver in here and a standard 16 mil LED. So if you did want to buy this and mod it, it is pretty easy and it is do doable. Um, the other thing is too, you know, the fuel is actually, although it's aluminium, it is actually pretty big and pretty heavy. You know, if we have a look here, you know, if you have a look at the thickness, that that is easily like a few mules thick. Let me just double check. Yeah, I just measured it. It's nothing crazy. It's like two mils thick, two, three mils thick. So, yeah, it's not too bad, but, yeah, it does have a very thick wall here. It does still dissipate heat out of the light to, to the walls. So, um, it's not that bad overall, but, yeah. Um, so, I guess after I throw in those other videos that I've already done, we'll take it outside and see how the uh, 600 lumen beast does. Okay, guys, so now we've got the Alone Fire X560 on in the backyard. Um, I think my next few beam shots here are going to be in the backyard because the last time I was out taking the last video that I'd done someone came and parked like right next door to me like right next door to the car so close that I couldn't even get back in the driver's door acting really sus so I ended up having to walk over to the car and I've been a bit you know how's it gone pretty sus so uh, I know there's been quite a few break-ins for people that leave their boats or their cars at the at the boat ramp and I was around that kind of area where that kind of stuff does happen so yeah so this is high mode when I had it apart I did actually slightly modify it I put on um, I done a front spring bypass and I put some more thermal paste on and I changed the LED wires because I already had it apart so I just want to see what this um, LED can can do it puts out on the lux meter about five six more lux so not that much more but it does actually stabilize the uh, output quite a lot more than what it was before so you can see it's not like an overly bright light but it's not too bad and the led isn't like kind of the worst blue if we shine it on the trees that have a bit more color you can see it's not too bad so we'll cycle it through modes this will be the low mode um, inside I could see some PWM on the low mode, outside here right now I can't, and, whoops, sorry guys, also if you have a look, that's how bright the towel cap is, it'd be pretty good if you could get the towel cap to, to stay on when the light wasn't on, but um, I'll look into that, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to modify this probably pretty soon I reckon, I'll give it a go, see how it does, and then we've got to go to the blinky, and then it's off. All right, now we've got the Alone Fire X560 on, um, and on Tice mode, I don't really have too many stock lights, so I'm going to put a D25S on to the right here, and the Alone Fire to the left. So the D25S is using the two um, luminous SST40s for a total output that's supposed to be a thousand two hundred to about yeah somewhere around about there, thousand two hundred lumens. Uh, the beam is a lot wider than this beam. But you can see, you know, the difference between the six, seven hundred lumens that this light is now putting out. So with the updates that I've done, it's bumped it up from like six hundred to about seven hundred lumens, somewhere around about there. You can see there's not a whole lot of difference in output side by side. So the um, alone fire to the uh, left and the um, D25S to the right. We'll turn the alone fire off, and that's what the um, D25S looks like. So although it is a brighter light, you can see it's not a huge amount brighter. So the amount of light that the uh, that the alone fire puts out is still pretty good. And that's the alone fire by itself. You can see by a much thorough beam on the alone fire. Alright guys, the alone fire X560 now on. And I'm going to turn on that um, B, or, uh, sorry, the uh, S2 Plus, the clear one that I had on camera with the uh, Luminous SFT40 on, on direct drive. You know, this light's not going to have any chance, the uh, the uh, lone fire, but, yeah, might as well see what it's like. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sometimes having less modes is easier. So, which one's which? Guess who? So, this is the lone fire here, X560, and the um, S2 Plus there. So, you can see there is a slight difference in tints uh, between the two lights. The, uh, the lone fire... Uh, 
fake LED is a little bit bluer than the SFT40. Wow, this S2 Plus is getting crazy hot. So yeah, you can't really compare these two. It's like more than triple the amount of lumens in the um, S2 Plus. But yeah, it still holds its own. It's not bad. And it's nowhere near as hot, so you should be able to sustain this kind of output for eh, maybe the same amount of time. I'm not really too sure, you know, if the S2 Plus will be that much better at dissipating heat. You know, you could always mod the X560 with a bit of aluminium foil to make it touch the wall better. Because, you know, you're, you're only really getting the threads touching on the S2 Plus anyway. So there's not a whole lot of surface area unless it has a... Uh, inbuilt shelf then you're talking like next level heat dissipation because you've got such a big thick area for the heat to travel from the head to the outside of the body and that's what you really, really want um anyways guys uh, overall i quite like this alone fire x560 it looks cool it's a pretty good price it does have its flaws but for 10 us dollars i think it's an okay bargain if i brought it again well i'm gonna mod mine now if i was to buy one and like, I could still keep it stock and it still performs okay, but I probably would mod this light, and that's what I'm going to do. So, as always, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.